We hear about these all the time. But do you know what they mean? Should you even care? Of course. Because it's got to do with economic growth and development. And why should it matter to you? Well, because it gives you an idea of our economic progress. And you, after all, are a part of our economy. But I'm confused, lah. GDP, gross domestic product. Then now suddenly got GNI. <laughs> yes. Well, that's why at Kopitiam Economy, we help you to top up knowledge, Sikit. Any time people talk about economic growth and development, it's almost always referring to GDP or gross domestic product. Now we're talking about gross national income, or GNI. So what's the difference between GDP and GNI? So here's the thing. Let's say you run a business. You're selling chopsticks. Now think about it. That's a huge market. Every Kopitiam needs to have chopsticks. And that's not even considering the market potential in China. So now you have a chopstick factory. Well, you need people to work for you and you need people to buy your product. Let's take a look at two cases. Case one, you hire foreign labor to work in your factory and they help you produce the chopsticks that you can sell on the market. This contributes to GDP. But the problem is not all the money stays in the country. Perhaps your workers need to send some of their salary back home to their families. That's money leaving the country. Sometimes that's not a good thing. But if that is the case, why do we even bother with GDP? Well, GDP is a measure of a country's production. And the hint is in the name. Domestic production, that is. So it doesn't matter who owns the business. As long as it's produced domestically, it contributes to our GDP. This only becomes a problem if all of our factories and businesses are foreign-owned and the money is ultimately not ours. That's why we've introduced GNI. So now let's take a look at case two. Let's say all your workers are Malaysians. They take home their salaries and spend it on all their needs and wants. Now this contributes to GNI. Very simply, GNI measures the income produced by a people of a given country. Let's stretch this a little further. Say there is a Japanese firm that wants to set up a chopstick factory here. This contributes to the GDP because it is well within Malaysia's borders. However, if it sends all of its profits back to Japan, it can actually have a negative impact on GNI. But if you were to open a factory in Japan, you know, because your standards are so high and you're able to compete internationally, and while your factory does nothing for Malaysia's GDP, as it's not physically in this country, if you send your profits back to Malaysia, it can still affect the country's GNI positively. It's simple, really. A positive GDP doesn't mean much if profits don't stay in the country. It isn't good if it has a negative impact on GNI. The key word here is income. It's not just about how much we make, it's about how much we actually get to keep. So having a high GDP isn't necessarily a good thing. It's sort of like saying you can bake the best cake in the world, but only some foreign fella gets to eat it. So we may be producing a lot, but none of that money stays in the local economy. GNI, on the other hand, is sort of like being able to bake your own cake and eat it too. Now that's yummy. Thank <laughs> you.